What's up guys? This is Gary with Fresh From The Farm Fungi. I'm here in Denver, Colorado and I wanted to go over the different colors of mycology. So I noticed that it's a pretty growing trend that people are doing different color petri plates and um, it's pretty cool to look at but I kind of wanted to go through where that may have originated. So I come from a clinical mycology background and there are a number of different auger types that have different colors based on their use and they can either be selective media which means that they are selecting for a specific organism or type of organism or it can be a differential media meaning that it has different dyes or has a reaction that would select for a specific type of organism or differentiate them from each other which otherwise like on MEA auger they would almost look the same. So I went ahead and ordered a bunch of different plates um, from Hardy Diagnostics. Shout out to Hardy Diagnostics. Um, these are one of the best suppliers for microbiology. Um, I got these plates overnight shipped uh, just to do this experiment and I usually run quality control on all my cultures just to make sure that everything's healthy before the season starts. So my first plate that I'm going to share with you guys is this V9 auger. It's a nice bright orange color. It's actually made with um, V8 juice, like fruit juice, which is really cool, and uh, potato flakes. So traditionally in clinical, um, clinical mycology, this is going to be used to isolate trichophyton. Um, it has very specific ingredients and it has this bright orange color which makes it really cool and unique to identify but I thought I would try running some of my old and tired strains on this V9 auger and see what happens I'm um, I've never done that before but it has you know eight different um, fruit juices and the potato so maybe it'll spark some life in some of my older strains so the next the next plate that I have here is um, Hectoin or H-E auger. So this is a green plate, very cool looking. Um, it's used to isolate the pathogenic gram negative bacteria. So um, I usually will take my liquid cultures and plate them out on some H-E auger and hopefully there's no growth um, because it's selective for anything like E. coli or salmonella and you can do further testing using the isolated colonies from this. So it's commonly used in food um, testing and quality control and different kind of food products. This is a really useful plate, um, especially if you know, you're going to be producing lots of mushrooms. You want to make sure you have clean cultures. So another um, selective media, and it's kind of differential media, is this blood auger, which is this beautiful red color. So this is used to isolate different bacteria and in clinical microbiology, um, it can be used to differentiate between hemolytic bacteria. Um, it will cause white areas of hemolysis around the colonies, um, but I'm just gonna use this to screen my liquid cultures as well for any kind of bacteria. Um, it's a really nice, beautiful looking plate and fairly inexpensive. So the next plate that I have here is a BCYE or a buffered charcoal yeast extract auger. Um, that's, a, that's a long one, but this is a very important tool for the cultivator like myself. So I'm growing a lot of mushrooms in my house. It's a pretty high humidity in the fruiting area and this plate is used to detect Legionella. Um, it's a, a very dangerous organism, especially if you're always working around mushrooms and the humidity's high, it's a good idea to test your environment for any harmful pathogens. Another thing that I like to do is uh, get DRBC or rose bangle auger 
and you can test for molds or yeast that will be flying around your area um, using a settle plate technique. So I'll show you guys how I do that with these uh, black plates. They're really cool, especially if you have Legionella, which I've never found and I hope to never find, but um, these bacteria, they'll actually fluoresce under a UV light. Um, that's how you detect them in clinical microbiology. So I just always screen, you know, once a month. It's, it's really good um, just practice to make sure that you're, you're cleaning your grow correctly and um, Legionella can hide in any kind of air conditioning units. Um, but to a healthy individual, it's not as dangerous as someone who's, you know, old or sick. But running a business 24 seven, there's no need to introduce any kind of pathogens. So I always um, will test my air and grow area with some of these selective plates. And then that brings me to the bread and butter here. So this is malt extract auger. It's a nice beige color. Um, I like to use I think it's Hardy Diagnostics or Thermo Fisher. Um, one of them has a, a quick dissolve plate, um, auger. So it's nice and clear. And this is what I grow my mycelium on. Sometimes I'll switch it up um, to potato dextrose just to keep it fresh. Um, if you start to see that your colonies are weakening or um, you can even try this V9 auger, which I'm gonna do today. I'm gonna try to revitalize some old strains. So I hope that makes sense. Um, we've got quite a bit of array of colorful plates and each plate has its own specific use. And I hope that, you know, in the future people are keeping that in mind because, you know, coming from a clinical background, it might be confusing to see a bunch of different colors in someone's incubator. Um, even though it's really artistic, it might just be, you know, best practice to uh, keep the MEA looking like MEA. Anyway, I'm gonna go head down to the lab and I'll show you how I um, do my quality testing on my liquid cultures and how I'm gonna do some environmental testing in my grow room. All right, much love. All right guys, I'm down in the lab and I'm gonna show you how I do my quality control on my liquid cultures using these three selective medias. So the first one's gonna be the HE auger, which is the green auger, and that's gonna test for Salmonella and E. coli. Then the red auger, or the TSA blood auger, is gonna um, isolate any bacteria, so gram positive, or uh, yeah, gram positive rods or cocci. And then this V9 auger I'm gonna to use to try to revitalize some of this Piapino that I'm growing. And I'm also gonna put plate it out on um, some MEA just for production. Um, so all I'm gonna use is this 10 mil sterile syringe. And I've got my liquid culture that's been incubating for about four days at 72 degrees. You can see some of the mycelium starting to form and it's a clear solution. So I'm expecting, you know, clear results, but you never know. Um, these plates will, they can detect one CFU per mil, which is about one CFU per gram. And that is a very low amount, but that's what you want when you're producing your own cultures. You want them to be clean. So I'll go ahead and open up these plates and show you how to test. So I've got my plates set up here and my liquid culture stirring just to uh, homogenize any kind of organisms that are in there which it looks like mycelium, healthy mycelium. And the first thing I'm going to do is open up my HE Hectoin auger plates. So you can see the nice green color. These are one of my favorite. And then we've got the blood auger plates, which these are gonna be bright red. So one thing about working with auger 
is um, you want to have you know a pretty thick layer about one centimeter thick anything that is an older plate is gonna dry out and this layer is gonna shrink down so I just ordered these about two days ago I know that they're fresh but I like to put these in the fridge for up to six months and that's the one thing I look for is if the auger is too thin it's not gonna have the correct proportions of nutrients that the organisms are going to need to grow but this is a really nice bright red plate from party diagnostics blood auger um, this is going to isolate any bacteria and then this is my one of my favorites that I've never used before and it is V9 auger so it's V8 fruit juice with, you can see the potato flakes that are in there for nutrients. And I'm gonna throw some Piapino on this and see if it adds any vigor. And then I've got some malt extract auger, which is a nice, you know, yellowish beige, clear. You know, there's no particulates in here. It's got a nice thick, layer to grow on and this is what I use for production so the first step in the process is to open up the syringe so I'm gonna go ahead and extract about 10 mils from my liquid culture so I use parafilm so that no air comes in when I'm transferring it from my hood to the incubator. Now I always like to take off the needle just because it's a larger bore and it will give me a lot more liquid, I guess easier than using the gauge needle. So I'll just really mix up this liquid culture, making sure that I get any kind of organisms in there. All right, that's pretty, pretty well mixed. Go ahead and set that lid back on. So then the easy part is just putting about a drop to a mill, maybe two or three drops on every plate. And then I can use this, and as long as it passes the QC, I will use this syringe um, for future production. So it's a good way to test your cultures, make sure they're clean. I'm going to go ahead and parafilm these and put them in the incubator and wait for about four or five days just to make sure that there's no growth. And then I'll mark my liquid culture stock to know that it passed my QC. And then I will, you know, set this aside until everything clears. But that's how I QC my liquid cultures. Um, and now I'm going to sh go show you guys how I use these um, for environmental testing. It's a BCYE buffered charcoal yeast extract auger selected for Legionella. So I'm just going to make sure that there's no nasty organisms growing in my grow tent. What's up guys? I'm here in my grow tent. I've got some oysters growing and some lion's mane over there. I'm going to show you how I set up my settle plates for my BCYE, which is buffered charcoal yeast extract auger. Um, and I'm going to be testing for any Legionella. Hopefully, I mean, 
hopefully I don't have any. It's a pretty harmful organism, but it's better to be safe than sorry. So for all of you cultivators out there, um, you should be testing your air quality for any harmful organisms or um, you can use DRBC plates, which are pink, and those isolate for yeast and mold. So if you're having, having any contamination issues, um, that's a really great tool to kind of give you an idea of where they might be. Feel free to email me if you need any um, professional consulting. Um, I used to test a lot of facilities with this kind of stuff, and I'm very familiar with um, how it works. So I'll show you how I set up my settle plates. It's really easy and um, then I'll go from there. All right. All right guys. So here is my plate that I'm going to be using for my settle plate. Um, you can see the air intake from my humidifier is right here and there's an empty shelf that's right where that is kind of falling. So I'm going to go ahead and lift off the lid and just leave that open for about 15 minutes. So my air cycles in this room every half hour, I, I just um, check the timer and it's going to circulate all the air in the amount of time that this settle plate is gonna be here, which is gonna give me you know, the worst case scenario, all the germs from my humidifier is gonna be pulling out of this vent and landing on this plate and after about three or four days of incubation, um, this should be clean, and that's gonna tell me that my air is clean. So I said before, um, you can do this with DRBC plates too. Um, those are gonna be less selective um, than these, so you're gonna see a lot of growth on those. As long as you know, you know what molds you're looking at, um, they're pretty ubiquitous to nature, but it's about the quantification of those plates. You're gonna want one or two colonies on there compared to you know, 50 colonies. So it's a good way to test your cleanliness. Um, I try to clean my, my humidifier once a week and my whole entire grow every time that I flip out my bags, which is a great time to test right now. Um, it's kind of worst case scenario. So this is more for my own protection um, I'm working in this grow a lot, probably, you know, 20 hours a week, and I want to make sure that I'm breathing in fresh air. So, um, all right, I'm going to go ahead and leave this and come back in 15 minutes. All right, guys, so uh, it's been 15 minutes, and I can hear my exhaust going. Um, that fog coming in is going at full bore, so I know that this has, you know, a full cycle of air that's gone over it. I'm going to go ahead and just close this up carefully and label it. Um, I like to use these golden ones just because they're easier to see on here. So I right. guess it doesn't show up that good on the camera, but that is my QC for the month. Um, 129 and I'm gonna go ahead and incubate this in my incubator at 73 degrees for four days and see, check on the growth um, if there's anything growing on here you can um, throw that under a UV light and if it was Legionella it would fluoresce um, but typically when I do these they're negative which is good and it means that I'm breathing fresh air all right, so my plates are incubating, um, waiting for those QC results, but I'm very excited about this V9 auger. I feel like out of all the, cult, the colored augers, this one might have the most relevance in mycology. Um, if you found this video useful, give it a thumbs up. If you're looking forward to more videos like this, um, you could subscribe to our channel. Feel free to reach out to me through email if you have any questions and visit our website, freshfromthefarmfungi.com. Um, we also sell our liquid cultures and our plate cultures on Etsy. It's a fresh fungi. Um, hope you guys have a good day. Good luck growing. Happy growing. Much love. <laughs>